Welcome back to another episode, doll. Just like before, I spoke about Andrew Wakefield and his fraudulent behaviour in autism research. This time, I'm going to talk about someone called Dr. Patrick Nemechek, who sells something called the Nemechek Protocol. And it, it turns out he's pretty fraudulent as well, according to my research. Let's get started. If you ever find the medical centre with someone working in isolation, pause and be cautious. Some qualified people running their private industries don't have moral intentions, but like Andrew Wakefield, have alternative intentions, causing conflict of interest. There is someone called Patrick Nemechek who sells what he calls the Nemechek Protocol for Autism and Developmental Disorders. I first encountered this around 2022 when a friend asked me about it and found it very suspicious, and many of his claims are contradictory to evidence. I spent a month investigating his product on sale on Amazon. During my investigation, I found many red flags sounding the alarm to not trust Patrick Nemechek. I first looked up his clinic and found out it was private. As I searched his site, I found the members of staff all had the same surname, which I don't see as coincidental. And so this seems like more it's a family organisation, some family business, as in see all have the same surname. I found short biographies about each member of his clinic. All of them had association with tax lawyers, lobbyists, businesses, and other multiple industries. So, so it came to my mind, is this clinic private because it's actually a business selling medical products on Amazon without medical supervision? Was That was another big red flag for me. Not having medical supervision is too dangerous. Next, I looked at his product. It was all about consuming fish oil, olive oil, and inulin. To dig deeper, I researched these substances to see if there's any potential dangers. Just because something's natural, that doesn't mean it's harmless. Flowers and plants are natural, but, but some are poisonous and have the potential to make a person die. Fruit is both natural and healthy, but what happens when you consume too much fruit? You find yourself with diarrhea. While researching olive oil, I found Patrick Nemechek is a fraud. Patrick Nemechek wrote I quote, an article titled how much of a good thing? Someone who works in all of our research, uh, called Athian Galadides, responded with an article to defend his profession about the lies that Patrick Nemechek wrote. I quote, What can I say? This is certainly not proof of anything but a bias and a clear conflict of interest on Dr. Nemechek's part. But here is where it gets really confusing. Dr. Nemechek, based a non-specific measurement method, recommends buy olive oils with phenol counts in the 300 to 400 milligram range. Last year, Nemechek Gold was listed at two levels, 359 milligrams and 610 milligrams. This year, only 610 milligrams is listed. Does this mean he is selling high phen phenolic olive oil? He considers to be of a too toxic level. Ethan. End of quote. Yeah. Dr. Patrick Nemechek believes in the conspiracy theory that vaccinations cause autism. He wrote, I quote, The threat of injury from the vaccine is real, as is the danger of not being vaccinated against measles, a potentially deadly infectious disease which we have no treatment for. It's important to realise that it is the unstable intestinal bacteria that triggers the cascade, resulting in autism. Many developmental disorders, as well as cumulative brain injury. Vaccination is only one of several events that can push an unhealthy but not yet autistic bacterial blend into a full propionic acid producing inflammation autism inducing blend remember 
that all of Andrew Wakefield's fraud was to do with bowel disease and the small intestine. So we're already seeing common factors here about the inflammation of Andrew Wakefield and the small intestine and making them become autistic. Yeah, apparently they weren't autistic to begin with, but became. And that's entirely contradictory to autism research. Uh, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia says, I quote, In 1998, Andrew Wakefield and colleagues published a paper in the journal Lancet. Wakefield's hypothesis was that the measles, mumps and rubella MMR vaccine caused a series of events that include intestinal inflammation, entrance into the bloodstream of proteins harmful to the brain, and consequent development of autism. This, this study was subsequently retracted in scientific terms. This means that the paper is not part of the scientific record, so it was found to be based on scientific misconduct. End of quote. So I've got now that Patrick Nemechek is based this theory upon misconducted science and on something which was found to be fraudulent and retracted. So the Nemechek protocol it is misconducted science and fraud. During my research, I found Patrick Nemechek added a little to Andrew Wakefield's misconducted studies. Nemechek added something called small intestine bacterial overgrowth, abbreviated as CBR, S-I-B-R. And I dug deeper, only more conspiracy arose. If there is bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, the immune system will activate, sending inflammation to heal and repair that issue with the bacteria. Once again, it only takes looking at the evidence from other studies and asking a few simple questions to expose this as conspiracy and conflict of interest. First, non-autistic people experience CBER. So if CBER causes autism, why are people experiencing CBER and not becoming autistic? Second, not all autistic people such as myself experience CBER and are diagnosed autistic. So what caused our autism? Those of us who don't experience CBAR. Third, we know that our brains have been shaped by external forces as well as internal forces while still in the womb. So we know we are autistic before birth as well as after birth. We just don't know because there's no prenatal test for autism yet and the symptoms don't start manifesting until the child is between 12 and 18 months old. So we can't diagnose my birth concerning autism. In, uh, uh, Dr. Nemechek was taken to a court case concerning so, so, someone who was after a bit of money claiming they got hurt by Dr. Nemechek. Uh, here's what they came to find the court. The US court said, I quote, in cross-examination, respondent raised threshold questions about whether Dr. Nemechek possess the expertise necessary to provide a reliable expert opinion in this case. Dr. Nemechek is an osteopath, educated at the Kansas City University of Health Sciences in Kansas City, Missouri, has never held board certification in immunology, neurology, or the subspecialty of the autonomic nervous system, and has no experience conducting research into some of the matters his opinion touched upon, such as the function in the immune system. He is in fact not board certified in any particular speciality at all at the moment, although he was previously board certified in internal medicine. He also cited numerous publications in his CV, some of which he represented dealt with immune system dysfunction. In fact, Close inspection of the listed publications revealed them to largely consist of abstracts, articles he reviewed pre-publication, but for which he did not serve as a primary author. Letters to the editor of journals are items not actually published in a peer-reviewed publication. 
Klaus Quart. So Dr. Patrick Nemechek was actually found practicing plagiarism of other scientists who had not yet published all of their studies. So they may have found that their study was a misconduct and it's based on his claims in his CV upon plagiarism, by plagiarizing the work of others. So I can say with certainty, Patrick Nemechek is not bar certified in the relevant science disciplines to be attempting to cure autism. Once I saw the front cover of his book, I became more aroused. He calls his book the Nemechek Protocol for Autism and Developmental Disorders. The term autism being used in, the, in this title doesn't make medical no scientific sense. It makes me bad. It's nonsensical. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, describe autism as a developmental disorder. The title of his book implies autism is not a developmental disorder, according to the medical model. So why has Patrick highlighted autism? Why not just the Nemechek Protocol for Developmental Disabilities? Exactly. From my opinion and the available evidence, Patrick Nemechek has highlighted autism because it is seen as the fastest growing developmental disorder. How much money he makes depends on how many people can he attract and sell his book to. If it was called schizophrenia and developmental disorders, I doubt many people would be interested in his product. Uh, sorry, but things only get worse. Uh, due to Patrick Nemechek bringing Saber into the picture, I had to do more research about Saber. The results were not pretty. When, uh, when I sp spoke about medication, I shared with him medication intended to control an issue. Uh, that the effects only last temporarily and they do not address causation. I read some studies done on neurotypical people and found people who experience SIBO are often prescribed an antibiotic called rifixamin. This made me look up potential side effects of rifixamin since all medications have side effects. Fortunately, the health organizations, I looked on multiple organizations to do with health, are dead, and they tell me some more important information. Other than side effects, it informed me when someone recovers from SIBO with antibiotics, it usually lasts approximately 10 weeks, then the symptoms return. By antibiotics not addressing causation, the cause is still there. So SIBO is caused again, and we are back to square one. Uh, I say that health is more to do with having a harmonious relationship, a balanced relationship. Antibiotics stop the symptoms by removing the bad bacteria in the gut, but the relationship between good and bad bacteria is then knocked out of balance, causing issues making doctors prescribe more medication. Can you say being so focused on stopping symptoms to disabilities actually prevents us addressing causation and how failing to address causation with medications actually moves us away from the solution to a health problem? So the medical model's belief in biological determinism, as I call that, it, it is problematic and does not help us get a solution. I went on to Patrick Nemechek's Facebook community to see what parents, given the protocol to their autistic children, had to say. Most of the comments were written less than a month prior to our visiting his community. Fortunately, there were some who had been given the Nemechek protocol to their children for nearly a year. I wrote the health organization's sites, shared the effects of rifixamin, last approximately 10 weeks. I found parents saying it helps their children recover, but several parents who had been giving it to their children for eight to ten weeks said it was great at first, but now their children had regression 
into an even more aggressive and worse way than the way to begin with. I don't think it's a coincidence that a found re refixment only gives results for about 10 weeks, and the parents are saying that this protocol lasted for 8 to 10 weeks. The same time range between refixment. I don't see that as coincidental. Never check instructed parents to mix all the fish oil, olive oil, and dinulin into their children's drinks or food to make them unknowingly consume it. Medications are multiple substances mixed and diluted into one substance. Now think about all the sweeteners, sugars, acids. Because of all of our processed foods, there's unlikely enough alkali to make acids less acidic. But they will be too acidic. These substances can be safe to consume individually, but diluting all kinds of chemicals, acids, sugars, etc., then putting it through a person's gut is not safe. Medications can interact with each other, as well as consuming anti-epileptic drugs I need to consume uh, uh, with melatonin. And uh, as I was doing that, as well as consuming the anti-epileptic drugs with, with the melatonin capsules, when I consumed the melatonin and AEDs at the same time, I was having nightmares and an aching stomach. My epilepsy specialist nurse advised me to take the AEDs several hours before the melatonin instead of together. I followed her advice and the nightmares and stomach ache stopped. It's been about 15 years now since that last occurred. So taking the medication separately prevented the problem. It was taking them together, mixing them, that was actually causing the problem. And the medications were interacting with each other. Never check and, and parents willing to do anything are reckless and dangerous. And one thing which gets me more aroused about Patrick Nemechek is it said he's an internal medicine specialist, but his Nemechek protocol is a one-size-fits-all, that you do the same thing to every single one who consumes it. And anyone who works in medicine should know there's no one-size-fits-all cure to any disability, disorder, sickness, disease, there's no one size fits all, as there's too much variation within the human. Yeah. This is a very complex science. Nemechek clearly doesn't know about the studies on the microbiome. To provide some context, in the 1990s, parents who had autistic children who had been prescribed antibiotics reported as their children were consuming antibiotics, their autism traits reduced. Uh, this suggested the possibility the symptoms of autism have a relationship with the gut. Unfortunately, we didn't know as much about autism 30 odd years ago. Like we weren't aware autism manifests differently between boys and girls. At first, it was believed girls can't even be autistic. Due to limited knowledge, all the data appeared too random and subjective that we couldn't see a relationship 30 years ago. However, last year in 2023, researchers used the more recent discoveries about autism, which made them test males and females separately from each other. They then analysed the data and have found a definitive association between the gut microbiome and autism traits. Euro News reported, I quote, the study revealed a connection between the microbiome and various immune genes, as well as connections to microbiome and diet, many of which are tied into punitive neurological pathways and neurotransmitters, which are key for brain signaling, Martin told Euro News. Next, and that was the part that kind of shocked me. In other words, the association is real. That is the take-home from our study. The mechanics of it still have to be worked out, said Taronsha Aldenberg. End of quote. So as she's saying there, these specialists have found an association, so they've found correlation, 
just like Andrew Wakefield and Patrick Nemechek, but they are not saying by it, this is the cause. So they have not gone automatically related correlation equals causation. as what Patrick Nemechek and Andrew Wakefield did in their conspiracy. Now, this discovery is very promising from Mardio, and it may show that for decades now, autumn has been based on false assumptions. If increasing gut health reduces autumn traits and enables brain development, there's a possibility most of Section B in the autumn diagnostic criteria are comorbidities and not actually a part of autism itself. Brain science certainly shows there is a difference in social traits and social brain circuits. Brain science has shown through neuroimaging by autistic people, exercise of posterior or back regions of the brain, more which is to do with processing the objective world, which can explain why autistic children tend to be more attracted to objects in the environment ever on activities being fixated so using the back of the brain mod does make that make sense but non-autistic people use anterior or front regions of the brain mod which is to do with processing the social world which does explain and make sense why non-autistic people seem to have the ability to be social in such a natural way and don't need to be taught in interventions, social skills, but just pick up on them naturally by using the social circuits more. Because during brain development, when you're very young, just after birth, whichever parts of your brain you use more, they're the parts that become stable and strong. And the other parts rather get pruned out uh, so that the brain gets decluttered. But everything is decluttered in the brain. But now all you've got is that the the brain circuits that you were using regularly because why would your brain need the circuits if you were never using them yeah so neurotypical people are actually more susceptible to what are called conspiracy theories J just like andrew wakefield's conspiracy and and patrick nemechek here yeah, because of the way the brains function since most professionals are neurotypical they fall into a trap, which makes them believe conspiracy theories and they even turn their eyes away from objective evidence and pretend there is no evidence. Once artistic people infiltrate the field of autism research, once we have people getting diagnosed with Asperger syndrome, as it used to be called, the previous beliefs were exposed as conspiracy theories. For example, the triad of impairments by Lana Wing. In that, that wasn't intentional. She wasn't intending to perform conspiracy, uh, but we've come to find that it is. And it's always been neurodivergent researchers who expose the comp conspiracies and have things corrected. Uh, for example, in ADHDers, they have lower levels of a neurotransmitter called dopamine, brain research shows. Autistic people also have a lack of of this dopamine, which is why you find them stim more, because they are under-stimulated, they stim to become stimulated. So brain science is actually showing us some great progression. It is. Uh, and like I said, it's always been the neurodivergent. Uh, so just, uh, just give one example of the trial impairments, then another conspiracy, uh, which quite a lot of people who would known about the history of autism, I would have known the refrigerator mother theory. Uh, that was a conspiracy theory that uh, Dr. Lee O'Connor in, in the US, who, who invented infantile autism, as he called it, uh, he, went, he went placing all the blame on the mothers, acting like the mothers never loved the children. And concerning the social deficits, but they've actually been found to be social differences rather than deficits. Such as a, an autistic researcher, Dr. Damian Milton, was also a sociologist. He gives, goes to conferences about intellectual disability and numerous others. 
he proposed something called the double empathy problem in 2012. Autistic people could already say the trend of impairments was wrong nearly two decades earlier. In 1993, illustrated by an article written by Jim Sinclair called Don't Mourn For Us. I quote, Yes, that takes more work than relating to a non-autistic person, but it can be done. Unless non-autistic people are far more limited than we are in their capacity to relate, we spend our entire lives doing it. Each of us who does learn to talk to you, each of us who manages to function at all in your society, each of us who manages to reach out and make a connection with you, is operating in alien territory, making contact with alien beings. We spend our entire lives doing this. And then you tell us that we can't relate. Close quote. That was an article by Jim Sinclair, another autistic person, particularly directed and written for parents uh, uh, to be spoken at a conference. And now, just let me spell a few things out in this paragraph from Don't Mourn For Us. I will first address the phrase, function at all in your society. Take notice of the term your. The term your is indicating a disconnection. The opposite of your is mine or ours, as if the society belongs to someone. As mentioned in our early times, disability is contextual. Our lives are like stories, you know, and stories are contextual. A story has a plot, a theme, and a framework, but if someone does not fit within the framework, there lies the disconnection. By normativity producing a framework, numerous people become disabled as they are not as able to relate and connect. We could use phone calls and satellite signals as an analogy. Uh, just like there's two people, there are two phones. Two people connect with their minds as two phones connect through satellite signals. However, if something around you blocks the satellite signal, you become disconnected and neither of you can communicate. In the same sense, when misunderstanding occurs in communication between autistic and non-autistic people, it blocks mutuality, disabling people from relating. I would say that's a far, far cry from someone having any kind of biological deficiency or brain disease. Please may share your thoughts about the Nemechek protocol. If you have experienced it or given it to a child, uh, please share what results you found. Please may subscribe to my channel to help spread the message and increase awareness. Thank you.